fist by fist. Rage by rage, I pursue them. Chaining out Medra's threats, I moved from home to home in search of the people who believed he was the Messiah. Oh, how they feared me in Jerusalem for wreaking havoc on the early church. Burning with so much hatred, my desire was to imprison disciples who were found preaching in the synagogues of Damascus. But in my quest to gain conquest over these disciples, I encountered the countenance of the Lord Almighty which transformed my life. In my vicious pursuit of preachers, I became a preacher. My presence no longer aroused a riot, but a revival. This son of a Pharisee, whose life was dedicated to persecuting the Lord's disciples, was now found preaching in the synagogues. And like a gruesome eye saw, many could not behold what their eyes saw. On that day, I saw how doubt and fear swallowed the courage of these men, except for Barnabas, who like Esau, he saw me as his brother and welcomed me warmly. Regardless, my evil to journey together with him on the same path of ministry, until we had to part ways due to disputes. Then I, Silas, a prophet who said much to encourage believers in Antioch, was chosen by Paul to continue bearing the gospel of Christ to all, even the worst of the Gentiles who were not worthy to receive the gospel. So we journeyed from Antioch, the city on the east of the Orientes River, through Asia, Cilicia, preaching to the churches in Syria. Then Debbie and Lystra we met Timothy and continued to Phrygia. Galatia, Troas, Macedonia, Samothracia, Neapolis. And from there we came to Philippi, a place where our bodies will soon taste the soreness of pain. Where darkness will arise in war against the faith of two slaves of Christ for rebuking a female slave whose tongue made fortune through fortune telling. In our pursuit of a place of prayer, we're persistently pursued by this possessed, pestilent paragon of prediction onto provocation, which preceded a spiritual displacement of the principality in the name of Jesus, I commanded. An act that God has profusely persecuted, purportedly for publicly professing Christ to the slave girl. Consequently, we were captured by her captors and convicted for the crime of causing loss of capital to her captors and contravening customs. So the swarm of spectators spicefully swooped in and swallowed us. And soon we were sentenced, seized, subdued, starkly stripped to our skins and souls, severely struck, scourged, and sent to suffer slavery with stripes in cells. We were made a public spectacle for preaching salvation and professing our savior. But at the peak of the silent midnight, though pain was severe, the scars plenty, pang surging, and our skins peeling, we, Paul and, and Silas, Silas, put away sleep, passionately stood, properly secured to our prison stocks, praying and screaming, praising and singing. For though in our bodies we felt pain and sore, we let our praises soar. Never cease praise. Never stop the push. Praising unto something happy, for we found power in the spirit. Peace in the soul. Peace in the suffering. Peace in the storm. Peace in the cell. In the darkest of times, we prayed. Around midnight, we sang praises unto God, and suddenly our shackles were shaking off. Then we saw, saw the, the glory and power of God in our tribulation. tribulation. Today, we see many going through a lot of struggles, wondering if God is still seeing their tears of pain. We come as men who have been through so much suffering to encourage you that even though things are getting hard, harden not your faith. For yes, just like us, this may also be your midnight. It feels like you're going through the darkest hour of your life. A season where you don't really understand what is going on in your life. This may be your prison. You look around and you seem stuck in life. But it's not yet over. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So be encouraged. For aside us, men like Peter and Joseph have seen God do miraculous things in prison. If he could be in the den and in the fire with men, then he has not forsaken you. So your pain, no matter how condensed it is, should not cloud your thoughts with doubt to doubt the droplets of blessings that fall at the dusk of dawn for your season is due. So hang on. Do not hang yourself because you are like the moon made to reflect the sun. So even if you are eclipsed by fear, arise in prayer and let men like Ellie wonder if you are lunatic. Praise him when it doesn't make sense. Praise him in the pit. Praise him in the suffering. Praise him in the prison. For we serve a God who sees the end from the beginning. A God whose words are yea and amen. Long suffering. suffering. It's not a season of suffering for long. But suffering for a purpose with endurance, patience, and discipline. So patiently endure. But prayerfully ensure that his will is being done. For you cannot see in darkness. But you can speak in darkness. Do not be silent. Do not give up. Keep, Keep praying. praying. Keep, Keep praising. praising.